Meta's latest V77 update could bring the biggest UI overhaul the Quest has ever seen. Surface typing could be coming to the Quest, enabling you to turn any flat surface into a virtual keyboard. And the Quest 4 could be shipping with eye tracking, finally bringing this long-awaited feature to the Quest lineup. All that and more coming up in this episode of The Virtual Lowdown. What's going on, virtual friends? Welcome to The Virtual Lowdown, the show where I bring you the latest and most exciting news going on in the VR world. I'm your host, Pete, and in today's episode, we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently. Usually, we cover a whole range of the latest news stories happening in the VR space. Today, we've got one big story which we're gonna be covering because there's a lot to go through. So today, as you probably heard in the intro, we're gonna be covering the latest update from Meta, the V77 update coming to quests very soon, hopefully. And if the leaks and rumors are to be believed, this could be bringing some massive changes to the way your quest looks, feels, and operates. And before we get into it, I just want to mention that all of the leaks, information, rumors, and kind of leaked images that might pop up on screen, uh, all credits for that go to Luna and Upload VR. Great work, guys. Keep doing what you're doing. All right, we got a lot to cover, so strap in, strap on. No? Wait, sorry, wrong video. Anyway, just let's get into the news. All right, so first things first, the major UI overhaul. So basically, as long as I can remember, pretty much since the beginning of the Quest's existence, the UI has remained largely unchanged. You have the kind of docking system at the bottom that contains like your settings and your recent apps. And then you have three window panes or three panels that are kind of fixed in place and you can kind of swap them around. There have been recent changes to uh, uh, update this system a little bit, including the ability to now place some additional windows freely in space above those fixed panels that you have, but nothing major since basically the beginning of the quest. Well, V77 is potentially going to be completely replacing this old universal menu system and replacing it with a new system, which they're calling personal display. Now, personal display will consist of at least two main parts, and that will be your portable windows and your navigator. So let's talk portable windows. So portable windows is essentially the new name for the way that we currently have the windows configured using the universal menu. So those three kind of window panels that I talked about previously that we all currently have, that's going to be replaced with portable windows. Now portable windows will essentially work the same as they currently do, but the main difference is that the interface and the way that you interact with these will be drastically simplified. So now we're only expecting to see a little movement handle for you to move the windows, a virtual meta button which will open or close the navigator, and a little button that will either hide or show these displays. To show or hide your portable windows, you can either double tap the meta button on your Quest controller, or you can do a double pinch gesture while looking at your palm, and finally, you can just press the meta button that will be virtually appearing on your display. The new navigator is where things will start to get interesting. So essentially, this navigator is a new overlay styled launcher for Horizon OS. All of the previous system functions, things like your quick settings, your photos, your people or your contacts, camera, all of those kinds of things will now be located in the navigator. So the main difference here is that you'll now be able to open your navigator as a completely separate overlay that is totally independent from the 2D portable window you have in the background. So the way things currently work is that, say you're watching something or doing something on a 2D panel, if you were then going to go and open your quick settings or your contacts, for example, to have a conversation with someone, uh, that would also appear on the same level, so as another 2D display beside your current one. So that could potentially shift the layout that you had going on, and depending on what you're doing, it could kind of mess things up and be a little bit annoying. But with the new navigator system, that's no longer going to be an issue because all of the system functions will appear as a separate overlay so it doesn't mess with the layout you had going on in the background. Now this can be great if you want to do things like adjust the brightness, volume, or just simply send some quick messages without messing with the content that you were previously interacting with. You can access the new navigator by simply single pressing the meta button on your controller or again looking at your palm and doing a single pinch gesture. 
The navigator overlay is also expected to have a little space for some indicators. So you could have a purple dot there indicating that your microphone or your spatial data is being used by some apps. Or for example, an orange dot could indicate that you're in travel mode. Now, these are only some of the initial functions that are expected to come with the Navigator. It seems that Meta have some other ideas in the works that might come out in some future updates. Uh, and that could include things like a global search function or even portals for Horizon Worlds. Alongside these exciting updates to the UI is potentially some improved functionality for your Windows. So while digging, Lunar uncovered quite a few potential new functions for the Windows, but the highlights include the pin function, which essentially pins your window to the current environment that you're in. So if you travel to a new environment, that window will stay behind in the place that it was. Return to space, that will return the window to the previous place that it was pinned. Share, which will enable you to share your current window or panel with other people in the same world as you so that they can also see it. Uh, we've currently got something similar to this specifically for the YouTube app. The co-watching feature on YouTube allows you to share your video with other people in your same world. But this share feature will basically bring that to every 2D window and display. And finally, and this one is a long awaited feature, Tether which will basically allow you to fix a window in a specific position relative to where your head is, meaning when you move, the window will move with you. Now, this is such a simple feature, but it's definitely one that has been in high demand for a long time uh, and is great for, say, I don't know, you're doing chores around the house and it just means you don't have to keep manually grabbing and dragging the window along with you as you walk around your house. It will just follow you. Now, these features could have a lot of potential to completely transform how we interact with our VR headsets. It just depends on how Meta implements them. But imagine having like your home environment set up in a way that as soon as you enter your virtual home environment, you put on your headset, you're in your virtual home environment or even your pass through home environment. And you've already got like a big YouTube window screen pinned up against the wall. And uh, potentially if Meta ever releases their uh, spatial anchors or, or whatever that feature was that they announced that they never released, um, it could play really well into that. You go into your home environment, you've got a massive screen already set up on your wall without you having to do anything, you know, and then you've got these spatial anchors, you've got like portals to your favorite games already there. You've got, I don't know, your calendar up on the wall, like a to-do list, whatever it is, it could be a really cool way to customize your home environment, which is something I think people really want from Meta. So I'm hoping that it does go in that direction, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see how it pans out. So the data uncovered from the leaks also suggested that a future update Update could implement an eye tracking based authentication for your Quest headset. Now, this would be in addition to the traditional kind of passcode. Uh, but what's interesting about this is that apart from the Quest Pro, which is now discontinued, none of the current Quest headsets have the eye tracking functionality. So, is this a clue that the upcoming Quest 4 could be coming with eye tracking? It's not confirmed, obviously, but it, may, it would make a lot of sense. I think eye tracking is a very highly demanded feature and I'm expecting it to come with the Quest 4 and this just adds a little bit of fuel to that fire. Let me know down in the comments what you think the chances of the Quest 4 coming with eye tracking are. Surface typing could also potentially be coming to an update very soon, and this would enable you to turn any flat surface, like your desk for example, into a virtual keyboard using your hand tracking. And uh, the leaks even suggest that you could potentially have the swipe typing feature, which would make things just a lot quicker, especially in VR. It's no secret that Meta have been working alongside partners to try and implement this technology, so maybe it's finally getting to a stage where it's ready to be inserted to the Quest headsets. And finally, we could be getting some improvements to the room scale boundary setup process. So, you know, when you kind of look around and it scans your room and produces like a mesh of your room's layout. Uh, I always found that feature actually really cool, but also definitely not perfect. Um, it kind of is a little bit buggy sometimes and doesn't always get things right. 
update? Well, according to Luna's testing, apparently uh, this could be uh, significantly improved in this upcoming update. Oh, and also apparently they've removed the objects in your boundary detection feature, you know, where if you scan your room and you've got an object in your boundary, it will show up as like a red pin. Uh, not really sure why they'd be getting rid of that, but apparently it's, it's not there in the new update, so there's that. And that is all for today's episode of the Virtual Lowdown. So I hope you learned something new. Let me know in the comments what feature are you most excited for to be coming in update V77. Uh, and just to let you know in case you're not aware, if the update rolls out and you have the update but you don't see any of these new changes, just know that Meta rolls out these features slowly. Uh, it, not everyone gets them at the same time. It's kind of annoying the way they do it, but basically you could get the update and not see any of these features for like another couple of weeks later. So uh, just be aware of that. And that is it for today's meta-focused episode of The Virtual Lowdown. I hope you learned something. Definitely a lot of exciting stuff potentially coming in the new update V77 very soon. Let me know down in the comments which feature are you most excited for. For me, it's probably uh, like the window features actually. So the ability to pin your window so it follows you around and also the ability to share your 2D windows like with everyone else. For me, that's what I'm most excited for. Let me know which features you you're most looking forward to in this next update and if you enjoyed the video please leave me a like really trying to grow my little channel here by myself and uh, any support from you guys super appreciated if you're new here and you want to keep up to date with the latest vr news and updates then make sure you are subscribed to the channel and i'll see you guys in the next video